Pluto Burns. I've got a new hat, a new segment, and a new manga. For our first quick review, we're looking at one of the seminal works of manga comedy, and one of the first really popular mangas and animes in the US, Ranma One Half. Now, I've only read the second volume of this manga, but I know the basic premise. Ranma and his grandpa visit some mystical Chinese springs. Each one has a different magical property, and Ranma and his Oji-san fall in. Ranma falls into the girl spring, and his grandpa into the panda spring. Now they turn into a young girl and a panda, respectively, when splashed with cold water, and back to normal when splashed with hot water. If you're gonna read this, better leave your suspension of disbelief at the door. If you don't, Ranma one half will curb stop it, grind it into a powder beneath its mighty authorial boot, and use its entrails to light its pipe as it reclines near a fire reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ranma and his grandpa decide that now that they are magical abominations, it would be a great time to pop in on an old friend and call in an old favor. Grandpa and this guy with no mouth made a deal one night, no doubt under the influence of a frankly irresponsible number of Jägermeister shots, that Ranma would marry one of his daughters. Grandpa's friend, apparently Lord King and Magistrate of the Kingdom of Not Giving a Shit, immediately offers one of his three daughters to the grandson of a man who until recently was a panda that communicated through Wile E. Coyote signage. The younger virginal sister and the older motherly sister immediately offer up the middle sister, Akane, as the sacrifice. Akane herself is a kung fu master who doesn't trust men, though given the staggering intelligence of her father, I can't imagine why. The volume I read features three central conflicts. First, we meet Ryoga, a rival of Ranma's, who followed him and fell into the mystical spring of Wilbur the Adorable Piglet. Now he is out for revenge, but not before using his pig form to get some quality time in Akane's bountiful bosom. We then meet Ryoga's sister, a girl so gloriously evil that she was expelled from the Joker's Evil Minion Academy for putting cyanide in the teacher's eye drops. This girl, who goes by the wrestling handle Black Rose, falls in love with male Ranma and challenges Akane to a duel. Through plot contrivances that would make J.J. Abrams blush, Yellow Ranger Ranma ends up fighting the Black Rose in a no-holds-barred SmackDown event called Martial Gymnastics. This school-sponsored event has the two scantily clad girls fight each other with gymnastic equipment until one of them falls out of the ring or gets beaten to death. The Black Rose has hidden spikes and blades all over her equipment, and the fight, which puts the best of the WWE to shame, doesn't end until the whole friggin' arena gets torn to shreds. The volume, not content with ending on just one high note, closes with a setup for next volume's villains, the Prissy Ice Skating Siblings. Boy Priss kisses girl Ranma, which pisses him off, so he challenges them to a duel. They accept, and without a hint of irony, suggest it should be a contest of martial arts ice skating, which was featured in the 1954 Winter Olympics, but was removed from later years for being too face-meltingly awesome. The whole time I was reading this, I was thinking to myself, why am I laughing so hard? I've seen all these jokes before in other wacky harem comedies, and they didn't make me laugh then. But then I realized, Ranma is from the 80s. All those other mangas were stealing its jokes with their filthy whale blubber coated hands. All of their jokes arrive with the subtlety of a wrecking ball on your music sensibilities. Their jokes are preceded by a friggin' Mardi Gras parade float announcing their arrival, and when the joke finally does show up, it stands on your kitchen table and cups itself in front of your face for 30 minutes while you wordlessly eat your peas and pray that the joke will go away. In contrast, Ranma's jokes jump out of the cutlery drawer, smack you in the face with a rubber chicken, and then walk out of your house mumbling about how you disturbed their nap. Now you may say that having only read a small fraction of the manga, I am not qualified to criticize. I would respond that has never stopped the rest of the internet, why should it stop me? Just having read this one volume, I am willing to throw a recommendation to Ranma One Half. I seriously doubt that at any point in its 14 volume run it becomes so unfunny that your soul tries to escape through your toenails. You know, I picked this up at the thrift shop for 50 cents and it gave me more joy than some $60 games. That more than deserves my recommendation. Till next time, I'm Pluto Burns, and this has not been Eagle Land.